thanks for joining us. Tonight, we're hearing intimate stories from victims of harassment, including someone who considers herself the poster child for the cause. Monica Lewinsky, now in the internet age, the bullies can do their damage more easily than ever. So how can parents help their children as lawmakers scramble to keep up? Here's ABC's Ryan Smith. Public shaming as a blood sport has to stop. Monica Lewinsky is once again standing in the spotlight, but this time it's on her terms. A few of you may have also taken wrong turns and fallen in love with the wrong person. Unlike me though, your boss probably wasn't the president of the United States of America. In a TED talk titled The Price of Shame, she describes the pain she says she felt after being ridiculed so publicly. I was branded as a tramp, tart, slut, whore, bimbo, and of course, that woman. 17 years ago, there was no name for it. Now, we call it cyberbullying and online harassment. And how today, she's determined to no longer tiptoe around her past, her infamous affair. 17 years ago, with former President Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. Not only played out in the press. January 26th, 1998. Monica Lewinsky meets with her lawyers. It was one of the first scandals to play out online. I was patient zero of losing a personal reputation on a global scale almost instantaneously. In the last year, she has joined a star-studded list of celebrities championing change. From Really Don't Care singer Demi Lovato really don't care. to the Jenner sisters. Bye. The issue even coming up on tonight's Dancing with the Stars. She's stupid, absolutely disgusting. But for kids like 15-year-old Ali Del Monte, the pain hits home every day. She says she has been the victim of cyberbullying for as long as she can remember. Drink bleach, please. You're so fat, it's disgusting. You're never gonna get a boyfriend. I was really overweight and my friends thought it was funny and I would get excluded from the playground. They would tell me that I was too fat to play on the swings and I would break them. But as she got older, the bullying quickly moved online. I logged onto my account and I had 172 messages on there telling me to kill myself and that my mom should have aborted me and that um, I was really worthless and pathetic and they were sending me, um, sending me, I got one last message that night and it said, kill yourself and I just said, okay. So I, I tried to take a bunch of pills that night and I almost died because of it. Her mother, Wendy, felt helpless. Cyberbullying, more difficult to combat than what she had grown up with. There was no escape. You can turn off your computer, but when you turn it on, it's back. You can tell that they're laughing at you and you can tell when they're talking about you. Finally, Wendy decided the only solution was to physically separate Allie from her tormentors. Wendy now homeschools her. Bullying is so rampant and the schools cannot keep up with it. And the problem continues, even in the safety of her own home. I still get messages. I've learned how to mentally prepare myself for those kinds of things. I have to be able to take some of that criticism because there's nasty people out there and it's never going to fully go away. When bullying would happen in person, you could go back home, you could close the door and have a safe place almost to recuperate. That doesn't happen with cyberbullying. It's very public, it's very humiliating, and it's 24-7. It's not like you can go home, close the door, and pretend it's not happening. It's a problem so many kids face. Nearly half of American teens say they have been victims of cyberbullying. When you're 12, 13, all you see is your social network. It's everything to an adolescent. Um, and that's what's so tragic about it. It's impossible to see a bigger picture. Now 26, Kelsey Kangos knows this all too well. She was living Allie's story when she was in the seventh grade. AOL Instant Messenger was the big thing back then. We're talking like 1999, 2000. Mm -hmm. So screen names would start popping up. Kelsey is a gorilla, Shave Harry. Um, they would make these anonymous screen names and I would just, I, the second I blocked one, another one would pop up and it was kind of this constant bombardment. People are anonymously picking on you one by one. 
you had no idea who these people were. No. I mean, you have an idea based on who's saying more things at school and stuff like that, but no, there was no way to know who it was. And it didn't stop there. Her tormentors created a website about her. It had my picture, my school picture from the yearbook, um, kind of copied on top of a gorilla body. They would fake journal entries that I had written. So like, oh, today I thought about um, shaving my arms, or today I thought about how many bananas I could eat at one time, or today I thought about bringing a gun to school because nobody likes me. She told her parents, and they were successful in getting the site taken down. But in spite of that, things got worse. It actually didn't stop until I left that school, until I graduated eighth grade. But once high school started, it was like a totally different scenario. Like it was like it just stopped altogether. Even though 34 states now have laws specifically targeting cyberbullying, putting these laws to work is unchartered territory. In cyberspace, it's all a bit new and we're all catching up to that reality. In the meantime, Women like Monica and Kelsey hope to use their own experiences to pass on hope to the next generation. There is so much ahead of you that at 15, your social life is everything, and I get that. So while it feels like this is it, this is my whole life, it's not. Oh my gosh, it's not. You have so much to look forward to. Almost like this too shall pass. Yeah. And bigger and brighter days are ahead. Yeah, absolutely. For Nightline, I'm Ryan Smith in New York.